uh, I want to start with, uh, uh, with one reflection that uh, Zizek uh, uh, did last days, that we need uh, uh, experiences, especially in these moments of crisis, uh, that disturb ideological prejudice, but that could be totally feasible. So it's what I actually work uh, with. So uh, I, I think that the, the sea is, done, is made out of drops, so uh, that uh, there are a lot of small experiences that we can uh, can do in the daily life uh, in our uh, small spaces of action uh, which uh, can be revolutionary. Revolutionary because they try to uh, create a new society which is done of listening in the others, which is not uh, so uh, common. Uh, also, I, I work with a lot of municipalities uh, from the left, and I face every day uh, this idea of the selfish left uh, who does not want to listen to the others and likes a lot to speak only among similars. I don't think that we can do real participation if we only listen uh, to similar people. We, we must deal with uh, differences, knowing that differences continue to exist. If we don't want to, if don't, we don't want, but they continue to exist. So. And it's a hard job to convince the other that something is good, then to impose our vision to the other. So that's the way in which I work uh, with participation. And that's why I... I'm a little bit critics on the title of this uh, panel because uh, I would uh, I see just direct democracy possibly in the in the form uh, in which is described in uh, in many uh, new uh, dictionaries uh, in which uh, it's uh, thought as uh, mainly as a sort of uh, institutional series of instruments uh, uh, that can integrate the representative democracy in some moments uh, and uh, like happens with referendum or with petitions, in many cases they can be extremely reductive of the complexity of reality. Uh, I think that when we deal uh, with uh, the issue of participation, we must deal with the variable geometry of uh, deliberative democracies experiments, so those which are centered mainly in the discussion and an exchange of argumentation between different people, uh, experience of participatory democracy, which are more interested to create uh, common results together through consensus or also through majority in some cases, and uh, experiences of di democracy which try to enlarge, also in an institutional way, to everybody, not only the formal citizens, but in some cases, for example, many local referendum, uh, they allow to vote uh, 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 immigrants uh, which are uh, living in the city but not uh, formal citizen, uh, uh, young people which is not entitled to vote, so they are trying to enlarge uh, the scope of the representative democracy. So with this variable geometry, I think that we have to deal with another issue which is transcalarity of actions. Um, in, in the left, I see two uh, not dialoguing movements sometimes. A group of internationalists which think that only global dreams matters, and another group of people with works every day in the local context, and they are concentrated in changing the reality and the perception of people, and sometimes they forget networking. And so if they don't do critical mass, this spirit will be minority, and they will not change the paradigm and, and the political and civic culture. So I think that we have a responsibility has left to make these uh, tracks uh, of our battle dialogue more. I'm thinking of something that I have been studying in the last year, which is the situation of Brazil, where, for example, in 2001, the law on coal statutes of the city has been approved. Uh, with a large majority, quite unanimity, in a parliament that was at the time dominated by the president, Fernando Henrique Cardoso, uh, why they managed to approve this, uh, this law, which is the most progressive law in terms of urban reform. Because they did 15 years of experiment before, and a parallel battle of 3,000 social movements uh, which worked at the national level, trying to use uh, as a leverage uh, what has been successful at local level. So I think this kind of articulation is what you need uh, at national levels, but also at uh, continental level. Um, in, in this case, I, I wanted to add uh, one thing on the issue on direct democracy as uh, a risk of 
a simplification of issues. I, I'm thinking about some referendum in Switzerland or the e-petition that uh, uh, the, the Prime Minister Cameron uh, introduced in, in UK, which gave as a first result uh, a group of 1,000 people that were asking to the Parliament to debate uh, the reestablishment of uh, the dead uh, penalty in UK. So uh, I think that the uh, simplification of issues is very dangerous. And so for me, uh, the integration between direct democracy and long moments of participation in which you build together the questions of the referendum, it's uh, very important. Uh, I see as a, an important uh, uh, central issue of the left uh, uh, that of uh, uh, avoiding all the systems that are just summing preferences. Because that is what we are doing with uh, many of the uh, so-called uh, e-voting. Uh, we are just summing individuals' uh, preferences without a, a creation of a common space in which people are uh, forced to listen to each other with clear rules. And uh, this summing of preferences is, is what I see as something more uh, feasible for the rights, which has uh, simplification, in my view, in its uh, DNA. I think that the, the, the left has to face a problem. Reality is complex. We cannot, if we simplify it, we are just faking it simple as uh, reducing everything to a slogan. So I think uh, that we have to find how to inform uh, people uh, through learning by doing spaces in which co-decide and we learn how reality is complex uh, and to try from this to re-establish a good access uh, uh, to the understanding of complexity. I think I have to finish. So I finish with this uh, reflection about uh, uh, um, for uh, building, uh, for building, for dealing with complexity, we need a lot of uh, transparency and accountability. But we have to escape from the neoliberal interpretation of this concept, uh, which is usually coinciding with uh, uh, displaying a lot of uh, sometimes useless, sometimes useful data, and leaving to the people uh, the responsibility to make sense of them because uh, these data sometimes are so complex that nobody uh, could interpret them. Imagine, imagine that uh, all the data of Greece that have been uh, hidden for a long time uh, were displayed. They were a thousand and thousand of books that uh, possibly nobody of us and many politicians could not even read. So the problem is to create a different, uh, different levels of understanding of the things that we are displaying in order to grant access to different levels of knowledge and skills. And uh, the last thing is uh, to try to avoid uh, participatory Jacobinism. This is a a sentence uh, uh, used by uh, the historian, uh, English historian Paul Gainsbourg, which is a, a big activist also in Italy, creating now a new political entity. Um, because uh, people has limited time and has the right in a world of work which is taken out of our time to have affects, to have family, to have loves, to go to cinema. So if we propose a lot, a too much participation on everything, we will have that Darwinian selection that Barbara was mentioning before, in which finally who decides in the end of the day, uh, it's only the people who's more perseverant, has more resources of time and money to stay and participate. So I think that rules are really needed in participation in order to guarantee this equal access to everybody. Thanks.